Hi everyone, please check the pinned comment and let's go through my local Elliott Wave scenarios on Bitcoin, starting with the triangle scenario over here, where we then have an A or W, X or B, and then eventually a C or Y to the downside, where if we look inside this triangle, we would expect a bit more downside to come for then a wave D, because we then have a three wave structure to the upside in a wave A, followed by a three wave structure over here in a wave B where the final leg to the downside is very, very extended, but nonetheless a more likely three wave structure over here. Followed then by another three wave structure in a wave C, which is a double zigzag triangle and then another zigzag over here. And then we would be looking for downside in this potential wave D. So this is then the first structure to the downside, followed by a second structure. And then eventually you expect more downside to come for wave D. Now there's very clear invalidations in a triangle. Either wave A gets taken before the triangle is finished or wave B gets taken before the triangle is finished. So in this scenario, we simply expect more downside to come before then eventually more upside and we do have by the way a daily naked point of control over here at 28.9k which is still untouched so that could be a little bit of support in case price goes to the downside however we also have a couple of lows over here so we have a double low basically over here a double bottom for maybe a bit of a liquidity grab before then finding support there and move to the upside we have to wait and see what price does of course when it is moving to the downside the second scenario that I have for you over here is becoming less likely. It's actually becoming more likely we're going to find a bit more downside than it is moving to the upside. Because in this scenario, what we were looking for is a WXYXZ, right? It's a basically five wave structure, one, two, three, four, five, but it's a corrective one where we then have a zigzag over here followed by a wave X triangle, another zigzag, corrective move, and then you expect another zigzag to the upside. However, as you can see, this structure over here doesn't really look impulsive because a zigzag is a 5-3-5 wave structure. And as it stands now, this does not look like a 5 wave structure. It looks more like corrective in a different pattern. So this being the low of wave X and then expecting a wave Z as like an ABC over here to the minimum target usually for a wave Z being the 0 0.618 as you can see currently positioned at about 30.3k starts to become very unlikely because price is just ranging 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 like it you know like it enjoys doing throughout the weekends as well now it, I do think it is important to at least tell you that we do have the target box up here between 30.2k and 30.4k and as it stands now i do have still this potential trading scenario on the chart but you know it's more and more unlikely we're actually going to find upside so i do think i will remove this one very soon because it doesn't you know the initial scenario that we had with this maybe being a wxy for example i'll show that in a second also becomes less likely so yeah the only scenario the risky one i already removed the risky scenario so the only safe one is if price would move to the upside get a retracement like you see over here move to the upside have a retracement then make a lower high but on the cvd create bearish divergences for then a short setup to the downside that is still a potential option in case price would go to the upside but if we then look at the final scenario which also happens to have a bit more upside we then look at this to be a wxy where instead of this being a triangle we actually have a three wave x over here so instead of a triangle we then have a three wave in b three waves in x which is a wxy and then in this final wave y we have a three wave w then a three wave X and then another three wave in wave Y over here. So this can be then a wave W followed by a wave X. And then you would expect a wave Y eventually for more upside where usually the minimum target is a 0 0.618 at 30.5K. But again, we have the target box here as well, which is important. And I think what might actually be more important instead of everything I mentioned is the vertical lines of the on the chart, which is the um, FIP times. And these are the FIP times that are taken from the low of W to the high of the green W to the low of the green X. So I'm comparing the length in time of wave W in green to a potential wave Y in green. Usually a wave W and a wave Y in green over here then have some sort of a one-to-one -one relationship. Now, of course, that can be a little bit like, it can be a bit off. So that's why I also have the 1.618 on the chart. But as you can see, price at the moment is nowhere close at least the middle over here of this 0 0.618 target or even higher up it's still ranging around here while we almost hit the one to one so price really 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 needs to start making some moves to the upside if we even want to consider this scenario to the upside where again the target box will offer at least some resistance and if we then go to the lower time frames and actually look at what is happening on the cvd 
Um, something cheeky happened, which I'll show you in a second, actually. Uh, but we still have the bullish divergences over here on the 15 minute, right? We have this low over here, price making a higher low on price, but a lower low on the yellow CVD with the low on the CVD that was made over here. This low on the CVD, the yellow line, is lower than the low that we made here with the CVD. So we do have bullish divergences, higher low in price, lower low in CVD, where the target for that CVD is taking the high over here at about 29.9K. And if we do then look more locally into this structure, you will see we also have some bullish CVDs going on. So not necessarily with the lows over here, Let's, let me double check, no, but with the low made over here. So if we go to the five minute, then you can see we have this low, and if I then switch to the chart, just to make sure you absolutely know which low I'm talking about. So we have this low over here, right? And now price is still at the moment having a higher low, right? So we made a higher low in price, but as you can see, the yellow line is tanking. So you would, you would think initially, hey, we got bullish divergences, and it's true. We do have bullish divergences. However, you have to also look on the five minute very, very locally what is happening over here. And I might actually have to remove the blue line. Let me actually see which one it is. Yeah, that one. So what happened is, yeah, we do have bullish divergences over here. That's absolutely true. And it's only invalid or invalidated once we take the low, right? But if you zoom in, we got this final drop to the downside based on bearish divergences. And funny enough, as long as these highs are not taken, we still have them. Because if we zoom into this structure over here, which literally is this final move, it does seem like maybe a bit of volume is kicking in. Uh, we have to wait and see. It might might be the move to the upside now. Uh, but over here, we had this final move to the downside because on the five minute chart, we were creating a lower high. But as you can see, a clear higher high on the CVZ. Uh, so bigger uh, bearish divergences very, very locally on the five minute. But these already played out. Why? We took this low. So we had bearish divergences between this and these, uh, basically these highs, but it played out because price has took this low. So the bearish divergences have played out with only the bullish divergence now remaining. And if I quickly put a fib on the chart and see how far price has actually retraced at the moment, then currently price has retraced to about the 0 0.786, which if we switch to the 15 minute, you can see it found support with a couple of wicks, but no closure below. So as it stands now, the yeah, we did have some bearish div uh, divergences, which, you know, I don't really like to see bearish divergences on really low time frames while we still have a bullish divergence. So yeah, the bearish one played out. So yeah, the only one remaining is the bullish one. So of course, price can find more upside, uh, but it's not ideal to also see bearish divergences. Even though they played out, it's not the ideal scenario for a CVD-based trade, right? Or trading setup. And also with the bigger bullish divergence that we have over here between the lows, between these lows, basically, yeah, pride price could move to the upside and take the 29.9k high. However, price can also just simply continue to the downside a little bit further, creating even bigger bullish divergences for then a move to the upside. So we have to wait and see. This is very complex counting at the moment because we have been raging for so long and also the fact that we got these weird structures over here, big move up, big move down, then starting raging. It's actually very complex to count Elliott waves at the moment. Maybe you've seen that online as well. And these are the best scenarios that I have at the moment with my best predictions where a move to the downside is attractive, but we do have some bullish divergences, which you uh, should not forget, but also an untouched daily naked point of control. So do I have a clear preferred scenario? Well, I wouldn't mind going down maybe a little bit further, um, but you know, th I, there's, a, there's of course a reason why I can't give a potential trading setup at the moment based on Elliott Waves. These are educational. Of course, all the trading setups I always give are educational, but it's very complex what is happening and I'm basically waiting for a bit more clarity as well. So we have to wait and see what price is doing throughout the weekend. However, if things like this are becoming very complex, there's one great benefit if this happens during the weekend, and that is that you can get your ass outside and enjoy the weather, hopefully, or do some stuff with friends and family, of course, instead of sitting behind the charts all day. And that is exactly what I'm going to do, which is the reason why I don't or I can't provide you with a 7 p.m. update uh, today, Central East European time. So yeah, this is uh, what I basically wanted to say. I hope nonetheless this video was helpful or valuable to you. Please check out the macro and the high time frame video if you're interested. And for now, thanks for watching and subscribing, and I will see you at the next one. Bye-bye.